Alice Ann Bailey, the founder of the New Age Movement, formerly known as Alice Latrobe Bateman, was born in Manchester, England, on the 16th of June, 1880. She came from a very affluent, upper-class family. Her father was an engineer and a devout Christian. Even though her family was surrounded by opulence and rooted in Christianity, Alice herself was a troubled child who attempted to commit suicide on at least three occasions from the age of five. She described her childhood as years of miserable questioning, of disillusionment, of unhappy discovery, and of loneliness. By the time Alice was nine years old, she was an orphan. Both her parents had died of tuberculosis. First her mother, when she was just six, and then her father. Alice and her sister went to live with her grandparents in Surrey. One Sunday morning, the morning of June the 30th, 1895, while on a visit to her aunt in Castremont, Scotland, something life-changing happened to Alice. She was sitting in the drawing room and the rest of the family had gone to church. According to her words, the door opened and in walked a tall man dressed in European clothes very well cut, I remember, but with a turban on his head. He came in and sat down beside me. He gave Alice a mandate to do her father's work all the time. She was just 15 years old. She initially thought it was Jesus, but later discovered he was called Kut Humi, or K-H, a master who is very close to the Christ. She called him one of the masters of wisdom. Alice was deeply religious, being brought up in the Episcopal Church. She later became an evangelist and a social worker. Alice traveled to India as a missionary to work in church-sponsored soldiers' homes. She was married to her first husband, Walter Evans an Episcopal minister and had three children. They later divorced. Bailey came in contact with Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, often known as Madame Blavatsky, a Russian mystic and author and co-founder of the Theosophical Society in 1875. She was the 19th century's most famous a notorious occultist and a declared Luciferian. This meeting caused Alice to break away from the traditional Christianity and open her mind and body and soul to Blavatsky's teachings, studying her book, The Secret Doctrine. In order to correctly understand Blavatsky's character, here are a few citations from her writings. Lucifer represents life, thought, progress, civilization, liberty, independence. Lucifer is the Logos, the serpent, the savior, the celestial virgin, thus becomes at the same time, the mother of gods and demons because he's the ever loving beneficent divinity. But in antiquity and in reality, the name of this God is Lucifer. Lucifer is the divine and earthly light, both the Holy Spirit and Satan at the same time. In 1919, Alex experienced contact with another of the masters, Dwal Kul, whom she called simply the Tibetan. She spent the rest of her life writing down his teachings, which she received by telepathy and communicating them to the world. These visitations through telepathy caused her to write 25 books over 30 years. And since Alice claimed to receive all of her instructions and wisdom from her new age and theosophy writings from a spirit being, 
It is clearly evident there is a demonic inspiration to the New Age philosophies and practices. Alice remarried a 32nd degree Freemason called Foster Bailey. Together they founded the esoteric magazine at The Beacon and started a publishing company called The Lucifer Trust in 1922 to publish the books of Bailey and Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. The name was changed to the Lucis Trust after the original name Lucifer was frowned upon by many. The Lucis Trust, by which it is still known today, is the publishing house that handles all of the United Nations documents. It is situated in the UN Plaza in New York. It's open to the public and has a vast range of books that focus on yoga and spiritual meditation. Alice and Foster Bailey also started a group called World Goodwill, an official non-governmental organization within the United Nations. The specified aim of this group is to cooperate in the world of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. Readers should bear in mind that the reappearance of the Christ, as stated in this literature, is not to be confused with the biblical concept of the second coming of Jesus Christ, but refers to the world teacher who is expected to lead humanity into a forthcoming golden age on earth. Alice quotes her spirit guide, the Tibetan, as she refers to him. The Tibetan has asked me to make it clear that when he is speaking of the Christ, he is referring to his official name as the head of the hierarchy that Christ works for all men irrespective of their faith. He does not belong to the Christian world any more than to the Buddhist or to the Mohammedan or any other faith. There is no need for any man to join the Christian church in order to be affiliated with Christ. The requirements are to love your fellow men, lead the disciplined life, recognize the divinity in all faiths, in all beings, and rule your daily life with love. In 1994, in a Lucis Trust World Goodwill newsletter, that publication reported the creation of a UN interfaith organization called the Temple of Understanding. The goal being to create a spiritual UN. Bailey wrote a book in 1957 entitled The Externalization of the Hierarchy. The hierarchy are the spiritual master entities that run the world from behind the scenes. This is the base that the UN starts from when making decisions. I will quote from the Lucis Trust website, a statement by Alice Bailey. The Christ has been 2000 years the supreme head of the church invisible, the spiritual hierarchy composed of disciples of all faiths. He recognizes and loves those who are not Christian, but who retains their allegiance to their founders, the Buddha, Muhammad and others. He cares not what the faith is if the objective is love of God and of humanity. If men look for Christ, the Christ who left his disciples centuries ago, they will fail to recognize the Christ who is in the process of returning. The Christ has no religious barriers in his consciousness. It matters not to him of what faith a man may call himself. The Son of God is on his way and he cometh not alone. His advanced God is already here and the plan which they must follow is already made clear. Let recognition be the aim. In her book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy, Alice Bailey writes, there will not be any dissociation between Universal Church, the Sacred Lodge of all true Masons and the inner circles of the esoteric societies. In this way, the goals and the work of the United Nations shall be solidified and the Church of God led by all religions and by all spiritual groups shall put an end to the great heresy 
of separateness. What did Christ say to us? He said, be thou separate, come out of them, be separate. Unfortunately, today, many pastors and well-known people are being deceived by the United Nations. They are being invited to join what is called the World Peace Movement. And yet Jesus clearly states that there's no peace without him. What does the present priest of the UN have to say? The United Nations is the way, the way to oneness that leads to the supreme oneness. It is like a river flowing towards the source, the ultimate source. The United Nations becomes for us the answer to world suffering, world darkness and world ignorance. The inner vision of the United Nations is a gift supreme. This vision the world can deny for 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years. So what is the New Age agenda? Number one, merge God and nature. Eugenics, number two. Number three, eradicate male-female distinction. Number four, world peace and nuclear disarmament. Number five, one world economic and financial system. Number six, one world government. And number seven, one world religion. How do you lead the world to unite and bring religions together? Education. The world will not change and find peace if there is not a new education. These are the 10 points. The 10 point charter of Alice Bailey adopted by the UN. And the purpose of the 10 points is to change Judeo-Christian tradition or to redeem the nations from Judeo-Christian tradition. Number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. Number two, Reduce parental authority over the children. Number three, destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. Number four, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. Number five, make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. Number six, explore different kinds of sexuality. Number seven, debase art, make it run mad. Number eight, use media to promote and change mindset. Number nine, create an interfaith movement. And number 10, get governments to make all these laws and get the church to endorse these changes.